and succeed. What it means to be Jewish in the 21st century is in some ways entirely different, um, but by being entirely different, it's actually the same. By which I mean like, Every single country that Jews have lived in and century that Jews have lived in have offer, has offered them particular challenges and um, offered also particular opportunities. Um, the notion that, that I hear a lot that um, American Jews are rich. There are plenty of American Jews who are not rich um, and who certainly don't consider themselves rich. There are plenty of Jews who live below the poverty line. Um, so living as a Jew in the 21st century in America doesn't necessarily mean you're rich. It doesn't mean that you're religious, although many are. It doesn't mean that you're, it doesn't even these days mean that you're, you consider yourself pro-Israel. I remember once when um, we, I, I heard a story about um, bark mitzvahs, people who bar mitzvah their dogs. Um, and I remember my mother was horrified by this. It was just like the worst, you can't bar mitzvah your dog, it's sacrilegious, it's terrible. And I thought to myself, okay, it's sacrilegious, but on the other hand, somebody woke up in the morning and said, what my dog really needs is a bar mitzvah. And I thought, you know what? We don't live in a world in which people are embarrassed of their Jewish identity. Like, we live in a world in which people are engaging in it, maybe engaging with it in idiotic, stupid, silly ways, but the impulse is there, and that impulse needs to be honored and respected and examined and looked at and engaged with. Um, so that's my job. The idea that my readers, or that readers of, um, of Tablet, are smart and interesting and fun also, it seems kind of obvious. I don't want to write just about me, just to write about me and the things that there are things I could write about that are just weird circumstances of my life, but I don't, that's not really what I think is interesting to readers. I think that, because I don't think I'm necessarily interesting, I think the only reason why I'm interesting is because I may be going through the exact same thing that a lot of other people are going through, and it's my job to actually put it on paper. I wrote a piece about my divorce, but I didn't write a piece about my particular div divorce and um, the relationship between me and my ex-husband. The thing for me was the pressure that I felt being having grown up in a modern Orthodox community that had moved rightward. And that felt like something that other people would go through. The personal and the communal intersect sometimes. And a community's rightward shift sometimes affects people's personal lives. That's where that's the 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 nexus that I find interesting. Um, where larger forces and people's individual lives collide. The lesson of my career has been um, the beauty of small places, because I started as an intern at The Forward, and when you started a smaller publication, there's a ton to do and there aren't that many people to do it. So. I was an intern and within a few weeks I was writing three stories a week because there were fantastic editors at the Forward. I had been to journalism school but I did not have any practice on the field, really. Um, and the editors just walked me through these stories. I ended up covering religion and intellectual life. Then six months in, um, the arts and culture editor um, went on, went left to work on a book and they asked me if I would apply for the position. And I still think that, sometimes I still think that I was just a placeholder. They are sort of like, well, you're here, let's put you there for now, and you probably won't work out. I was six months out of journalism school, or seven months out of journalism school. Um, but I really took to the job, and I loved it. Um, and I think that I was able to do things with the culture section of the forward, first of all, because the forward is itself just a, a wonderful newspaper with an incredible history, and it allows you to almost put your own stamp on it. And moving to Tablet, would you say that that's like the culmination of your career? Uh, you went from Ford to Tablet, you have a big job, you're a young woman in a sort of big girl's shoes. If our readers see in Tablet what my staff puts into it, which is to say a place where people of any religious affiliation, people of any political affiliation, people who are just interested in culture, people who are curious about Jewish identity um, and how it plays out in the world, can come and 
examine that, play with it, engage with it, engage with others, um, then that will be an unbelievable achievement. It's not like a, a, a finely tuned recipe where I'm like, oh, I need a dash of pop culture and I need a dash of academic stuff and I need a dash of politics. And it's more like, what are we talking about today? And what, do I, what am I interested in today? What is the staff is interested in today? And it just sort of flows from that. Websites can run recipes, right? So there are, there was the example of a recipe that I once sent my sister for um, gumbo chillant. Um, and of course, it's a southern dish. And, my, and like my sister, who, who would live on the Lower East Side, the idea that she would make gumbo chillant on Shabbos, for me, seems to be exactly what we're going for, this cross-pollination of, that excites me, I never knew about that, and that's somebody else's Jewish identity, and why don't I take it and play with it and make it in my life? In fairness to my parents, um, they are very proud of Tablet um, and very proud of the, the, my time at the Forward, my time in politics, but I think my parents would like to see me married with a bunch of kids.